Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester 3, scaling networks, and this is chapter 4, wireless local area networks. Chapter 4 is separated in four sections. We have section 4.1, wireless LAN concepts, section 4.2, wireless LAN operations, section 4.3, wireless LAN security, and then section 4.4, wireless LAN configuration. This is section 4.1, wireless LAN concepts. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to describe wireless LAN technologies and standards, describe the components of wireless LAN infrastructure, and describe wireless topologies. WLAN components, supporting mobility. Productivity is no longer restricted to fixed works location, or defined time period. People now expect to be connected at any time, any place, from the office to the airport or the home. Users now expect to be able to roam wirelessly. Roaming enables a wireless device to maintain internet access without losing a connection. Wireless technologies. Wireless networks can be classified broadly as Wireless Personal Area Network, or WPAN for short, this operates in the range of few feet. Bluetooth or Wi-Fi Direct enables devices are used with WPAN. Wireless LAN or WLAN, which operates in the range of few hundred feet, such as in a room, home, office, and even in the campus environment. Then we have a wireless wide area networks or W1. This operates in the range of miles, such as a metropolitan area, cellular hierarchy or even of, on intercity links through microwave relays. Bluetooth. An IEEE 802.15 WPAN standard uses a device pairing process to communicate over distance of up to 0.5 mile or 100 meters. So 802.15 WPAN, wireless personal area network. Then we have a Wi-Fi, wireless fidelity, an IEEE 802.11 WLAN standard provides network access at home and corporate users to include data, voice and video traffic to distances up to 0.18 miles or 300 meters. Then we have a WiMAX, worldwide interoperability for microwave access, an IEEE 802.16 standard, W1 standard that provides a wireless broadband access of up to 30 miles or 50 kilometers. Then we have a 2G, 3G and 4G cellular broadband or mobile broadband. This consists of various corporate, national and international organizations using service provider cellular access to provide mobile broadband network connectivity. And we have then last we have a satellite broadband that provides a network access to re remote sites through use of directional satellite dish. So Bluetooth, WPAN is standard 802.15. WiMAX, W1, the standard 802.16, and we're going to talk a lot more about a Wi-Fi standard 802.11. Radio frequencies. All wireless devices operate in the radio waves range of the electromagnetic spectrum. Wireless LAN devices have transmitters and receivers tuned to specific frequency of the radio waves range. Specifically, the following frequency bands are allocated to 802.11 wireless LAN. 2.4 GHz ultra high frequency and the standards that they use that frequency you can see it on the screen we have 5 GHz super high frequency 60 GHz extremely high frequency so 802.11 standards so it all started on 1997 that was 802.11 released and now obsolete this is the original of WLAN specification that operated in 2.4 GHz band and offer speeds of up to 2 megabits per second. When it was released, wired LAN were operating at 10 megabits per second, so the new wireless technology was not enthusiastically adopted. Wireless devices have one antenna to transmit and receive wireless signals. The next standard was 802.11a. This was released in 1999. It operated in less crowded 5 GHz frequency band and offered speed up to 54 megabits per second. 
because this standard operates at a higher frequency, it has a smaller coverage area, and is less effective at penetrating buildings and stru structures. Wireless devices have one antenna to transmit and receive wireless signals. Devices operating under this standard are not interoperable with the devices that operate at 802.11b and 802.11g standard. Then we have 802.11b released in 1999. This operated 2.4 GHz frequency band and offered the speed up to 11 megabits per second. Devices implementing this standard have a longer range and are better able to penetrate building structures than the devices based on 8311A. Wireless devices have one antenna to transmit and receive wireless signals. Now at this time, 802.11A and 802.11B, they pretty much came at the same time. They were released the same, same period. Now, 11B was a lot more popular than 11A. Even though 11B, as you can see, is much, much slower than 11A. But 11B, because it's using frequency 2.4, the ranges you could go with that standard, you could go further than 11A. 11A, you pretty much have to be to next to the device to get received to get that maximum speed. And as I said earlier, that 11A is harder, I find it harder to penetrate the buildings or building structures, while 11B is a lot easier. Then it came up in 11G because uh, 11B standards, uh, the users that were complaining that they're not receiving the same speed as 11A. So we get 11G. This was released in 2003 and it operated at 2.4 gigahertz, which me and offered the speed up to 54 megabits per second. So now it operated in the same frequency as 11B, but offered the speed of 11A. Big improvement. Devices implementing this standard therefore operate at the same radio frequency as range as 11B, but the bandwidth of 11A. Wireless devices have one antenna to transmit and receive wireless signals, and this is a backward compatible with 802.11B. However, when supporting 11B client, the overall bandwidth is reduced, obviously, to support 11B. Then we have a newer standard, 802.11n. This was released in 2009 and operated at the both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequency band. And this is referred to as a dual band device. Typically, the data ranges from 150 megabits per second up to 600 megabits per second, with a distance range of up to 70 meters or half a mile. However, to achieve the higher speed, Access point and wireless client requires multiple antennas using the multiple input and multiple output or MIMO technology. The 802.11n standard is backward compatible with all of them, A, B and G devices. Then we have 802.11ac. This standard was released in 2013 and this operated at 5 GHz frequency only and provided data speed ranging from 450 megabits per second up to 1.3 gigabits per second. It's, this uses a MIMO technology, so multiple input to multiple output, and it uses up to eight antennas can, can be supported. 802.11ac is a backward compatible with 802.11a and n devices. However, supporting a mixed environment limits the expected rate, data rates. Then in 2014, we have released 802.11ad. This is also known as YGIG. It uses a three band Wi Fi solution using 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, and 60 GHz frequency and offers theoretically speed up to 7 gigabits per second. However, the 60 GHz band is in line of sight technology and therefore cannot penetrate throughout the walls. When a user is roaming, the device switches to the lower 2.4 and 5 GHz band and it's backward compatible with existing Wi-Fi devices. However, supporting a mixed environment limits the expected data rates. Wi-Fi certification standards ensure interoperability between devices made by different manufacturers. Internationally, the three organization influence VLAN standards are, as you can see it on the screen. Now, 
for devices to be able to on, to operate between each other, even if they are made from a different two different manufacturers, they have to fo follow the standards. So, for example, your router is made by some manufacturer, and your uh, network interface card or wireless network interface card on the laptop it's made by a different manufacturer. But as long as they support the standards, they should be able to interoperate. Comparing WLAN to LAN. So these are the characteristics of 802.11 wireless LAN and 802.3 Ethernet LAN. For example, the physical physical layer in the wireless, obviously, we need the radio, radio frequencies. As long as you are close to the device, within the range of the frequency, within the range of the access point, you will have an access. Cable Ethernet LAN 802.3, you have to be physically connected with the cable. Media access in wireless, we use collision avoidance. So carry sense multiple access collision avoidance while in ethernet we have a collision detection so in wireless we can't detect there's been a collision but we can just try and avoid it availability anyone with a radio nick in the range of an access point will i have an access in the ethernet lan cable connection it is required signal interference yes the wireless lan they are they are prone to the um, signal interference while ethernet lan is not regulation additional regulation by country authorities and 802.3 ethernet lan is ieee standard dictates some of the components of wireless uh, of the wireless lan are wireless nic so wireless deployment they do require the end devices they have a wireless network interface card as well as infrastructure device such as a wireless router or wireless access point a home user typically interconnect wireless devices using a small integrated wireless router. These are as access point, ethernet switch and a router. For example, some of these routers that we have at home, they're doing the job of the router. They usually have a four ports at the back, they're doing the job of the uh, switch. And as well as the antennas that they can do, they can be a wireless device. Uh, maybe as well they have the firewall uh, capability as well, so they, they're kind of integrated service routers. Business wireless solution organization provide wireless connectivity to their users require WLAN infrastructure to provide additional connectivity options. 822.11 refers to the wireless client station uh, as a station, oh, sta SDA for short. Wireless client uses the wireless NIC to discover the nearby access point, advertising the SSID. Clients then attempt to associate and authenticate with an access point. After being authenticated, wireless users have access to the network resources. What we have is two types of access points. We have autonomous APs and control-based APs. Now, autonomous APs, as the word says, they are autonomous. You have to configure an IP address and they will work autonomous from anyone, anything. Control-based access points, they are like lightweight access points. All the control, all the control, or like IP address and anything, they have, it will be controlled by wireless WLAN controllers. So autonomous ASPs, this one, you go there, an access point, you configure an IP address, you configure like uh, filtering or anything, any configuration will be done in the access point itself. While the control base, all the all the um, configuration will be done on WLAN controller. So wireless access points, control-based APs, control-based APs are server, are server dependent that they require no initial, initial configuration. Control-based access points are useful in situations where many APs are required in the network. As more APs are added, each AP is automatically configured and managed by the controller. The benefit of the controller is that it can be used to manage many access points. Some access points can operate in either autonomous mode or in a control-based mode. Then we have autonomous mode. Autonomous access points, sometimes referred to as heavy APs, are standalone devices configured using the Cisco command line interface or graphical user interface. Autonomous APs are useful in situations where only a couple of access points are required in the network. Optionally, multiple APs can be controlled using wireless domain services WDS and managed using Cisco Works Wireless LAN Solution Engine WLSE. A note: A home router is an example of autonomous access point because the entire access point configuration resides on the device. 
Large wireless deployment solutions here for large organization with many APs, Cisco provide a control-based managed solution, including the Cisco Meraki cloud managed architecture and a Cisco unified wireless network architecture. Cisco Meraki cloud architecture is a management solution used to simplify the wireless deployment. Using this architecture, APs are centrally managed from a controller in the cloud. Wireless antennas, Cisco Aeronet APs can use omnidirectional Wi-Fi antennas. This is factory Wi-Fi gear often use basic dipole antennas, also referred to as rubber duck, designed similar to those used in walkie-talkie radios. Omnidirectional antennas provide 360 degree coverage. We have a directional Wi-Fi antennas, directional auto antennas, focus the radio signal in a given direction which enhances the signal to the front to and from the AP in the direction the antenna is pointing. And then we have a Yagi antennas, type of directional radio antenna that can be used for long distance Wi-Fi networking. 82.11 wireless topology modes. So wireless LAN can accommodate various network topologies. The 82.11 standard identifies two main wireless topology modes. We have ad hoc in this topology, one is two devices connect wirelessly without the aid of infrastructure device, such as wireless router or access point. Examples include the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi Direct. And the second topology is infrastructure mode. When wireless client interconnect via a wireless router or access point, such as in WLANs, access point connect to the network infrastructure using the wired distribution system, such as Ethernet. So for example, when we have a two clients connecting together without the help of an access point or infrastructure device, then that's called an ad hoc. You get two laptops connecting on, on the cafe, sharing the files together as ad hoc. If we're using, for example, say that we are using an access point and to connect to the rest of the network, then that's called infrastructure mode. The AP connects to the rest of the network with a distribution system. So ad hoc, the WLAN topology mode is ad hoc. The wireless topology, independent basic service set. Number of access points that we don't have any. Coverage area is a basic service area, BSA. Regulation, additional regulation by country authorities. An ad hoc wireless network, network is when two devices communicate in a peer-to-peer -peer manner without using AP or wireless router. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi Direct are example of ad hoc. IEEE 802.11 standard refers to an ad hoc network as an independent basic service set, or IBSS. A variation of ad hoc topology is when a smartphone or tablet with a cellular data access is enabled to create a personal hotspot. This feature is sometimes called tethering. Infrastructure-based basic service set. The infrastructure base is because you have a uh, for example, an access point. This is called a basic service set. Number of AC, a, APs we have is one. This is a basic service area and regulation, additional regulation by country authorities. A BSS consists of a single access point in, interconnecting all associated wireless client. The circle depict the coverage area within which with the wireless client or the BSS might remain in communication. This area is called the basic service area. If a wireless client moves out of the basic service area, it can no longer directly communicate with the other wireless client within the basic service area. The basic service set is the topology building block while the basic service area is the actual coverage area. The term BSA and BSS are often used interchangeably. Then we have an extended service set where the infrastructure with topology mode this infrastructure we have we have an access point well two in this case extended service set is because we have two access point and they extend our service number of AC APs we can have is two or more the coverage area is extended service area regulation there additional regulation by country authority when a single basic service set provides in insufficient radio frequency coverage Two or more BSS can be joined together, a common distribution system, into ESS or extended service set. 
ESS is the union of two or more basic service sets interconnected by a wired distribution system. Wireless client in one BSA now can communicate with a wireless client in another BSA within the same ESS. From roaming mobile wireless clients may move from one BSA to another within the same ESS and seamlessly connect. Thank you very much for watching this section 4.1 Wireless LAN Concepts. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnishi. Next video 4.2 Wireless LAN Operations. Bye bye.